I think this is one of the most difficult times for educational, for education in general. On the post-secondary side, there are lots of issues around funding. The market metaphor seems to drive everything. The number of high school graduates are going to go up over the next few years and then decline. Increasingly, people are saying access should not only be defined as getting in, but access should be defined as having a, a, uh, an equal op possibility of both getting in and graduating. And then we come to institutional policy. It's a tumultuous world. If you're in admissions, financial aid, enrollment management right now, uh, you are sitting at the intersection of some of the most important and pressing public policy questions around uh, education uh, in the country right now. It makes it both interesting and sometimes a little vexing. With that kind of overview of public policy, we're going to focus on access, completion, and success. What are institutions doing around persistence and student success? These are the results from a study that was done in 2009. We were looking at how institutions organize themselves, and from an administrative view, is the institution's rhetoric around the importance of student success matched by their own internal allocation of resources and time to actually achieve those goals? And I think we're suggesting the answer that appears to be probably not. And as we think about student success, especially given the purpose of this summit and the role of Chris Ray, I think it's particularly important that we be thinking about students who we have some reason to believe that they might be at risk upon entrance. What kinds of support services are we providing? How serious are we as an institution? Although this, this particular survey does not focus specifically at, at students who might be more at risk, I think it, it's a more compelling question for, uh, for any institution because I think if you admit someone, you have a moral obligation to, to, to do everything you can to help them to be successful. And so what we're really focusing on in this survey is both how institutions administratively organize themselves to coordinate retention, as well as some key programmatic initiatives that the retention literature consistently hypothesizes or suggests that if you do this well, it will positively influence uh, student persistence. So what did we learn? Increased levels of student-faculty interaction, collecting midterm grades, collecting attendance, requirement of first-year students to meet with an academic advisor, an extended orientation. These were the things that all exerted a positive influence on having higher than predicted graduation rates. Most institutions, I think, have not yet matched their rhetoric around student success without, with, with actually putting the administrative resources, the money, the time into place to do as good a job as might be possible. I think we really don't know for sure how much more we could actually improve graduation rates because I don't think institutions have really hit the ground running in terms of the extent to which they're really putting programs in place. Our rhetoric doesn't match our reality yet on most campuses in terms of how, the way we focus on student persistence.